Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to explain five of the most common reasons why artists fail. The last reason I'm going to give you is the most important and the most common, so be sure to stick around for it. So the first reason a lot of artists fail is not taking their mental health and physical health seriously. So a long time ago, I realized that the quality of my mental health really does directly link to the quality of my paintings. Uh, and then also the quality of my physical health really affects the quality of my mental health. So it's super important to take care of your physical body, your mental state, and that way when you're in the studio, you'll be producing the best work possible. Now, something I do is, you know, when I get to the studio and I'm not feeling very excited, I'm feeling stressed out, something's wrong, I'm not in the right state of mind to paint, I'll just take a walk, I'll go hiking, I'll go exploring, I'll do something to take myself out of the studio and to really focus on myself to make sure that when I return to the studio, I'm feeling good and I'm feeling inspired. That brings us to the second most common reason why artists fail. So a lot of artists will come to an exhibition and they'll bring lots of paintings or lots of sculptures, but they won't all be at the same quality. They'll bring kind of everything they had lying around in the studio because in their mind, they think that the more they bring to this exhibition, the better chance they have of selling that work. Now that can be very dangerous because what happens is people will judge you based on the quality of all of your work, not just a few really good paintings here and there. So clients will come to that exhibition, they'll see this poorer quality of work, and they'll think, oh no, this artist is not as good as they used to be. I, I don't think I wanna buy their work. I don't think I'd like to invest in them anymore. Now that's one of the most common reasons that a lot of artists will fail. At the very least, it will seriously stunt your career. Now a good way to avoid doing that is to self-censor. So when I'm in the studio and I'm having a bad day, you know, I'm struggling with a painting, there's something that's just not working out, I'll literally burn it. I'll put it on the bonfire, I'll get rid of it, I'll make sure that nobody ever sees it because at the end of the day, you will be judged based on the quality of your worst work, not on the quality of your best. So that's a really important thing to remember. Don't forget it. The third really common mistake that a lot of artists make is not trying new things. It's really important to experiment and try new things in the studio. And when you do that, you'll end up taking something that you learned doing that into your common practice, into the work that you commonly do, and it will get better. It's really important to take a day to just have fun in the studio, to experiment with different mediums, different techniques, and even different styles. And sometimes this will even lead you to a completely new style that people will love as well. So it's super important for you to try new things and to keep that inspiration fresh while you're in the studio. So that brings us to mistake number four. Now this is a common mistake that a lot of artists make and that's getting stuck in their own echo chamber. So when an artist is really overconfident in their work, they may stop inviting people into their studio and they may even stop taking criticism. And that can be a really dangerous mindset which can really negatively affect the growth of your work. So it's super important to invite people into your studio, see what they think about your work, be open-minded to what they like and don't like, and that can really help you to evolve your work. The other thing that's super important is to get out to museums and galleries and to study work, to understand what you like and dislike, and to really try to take those little things you learn in the museums back to your own studio and add them to your practice. That brings us to number five. This is the most important thing that you can remember as an artist and the most common mistake that artists make, and that is not treating it like a business. So at the end of the day, if you're an artist, you need to treat your career as an entrepreneurial business. You need to use as many marketing tools that are available to you to get your name out to as many people as possible. You need to think outside the box, try to get into new exhibitions, network with as many people as possible, try to get your name out there, but also take in as much information as you can. If you talk to 100 artists a week, you'll learn little things from every one of them that you can take to your own practice and use to improve your own career. Uh, something else to remember would be to use old school marketing techniques like Instagram, having a website, even email newsletters. Uh, it allows you to keep in touch with old clients and it allows you to connect with new. Uh, trying to get your name out to as many people as possible using things like Instagram is super important as well. Um, another thing that's super important is if you 
let's say print a coffee table book and you give that book to every single one of your people who have bought your work in the past, they will have somebody over for dinner and they may ask, oh, that's a beautiful painting you've purchased. Who's that by? Next thing you know, they're looking through a coffee table book that has your website in the back and it will just help to really keep things connected. Uh, another super important thing that a lot of people fail to recognize is that the customer is truly always right. Even as an artist, it's very easy to get into a cocky mindset of thinking that the client is wrong and you're right. And the truth is, they're always right. Uh, I've had situations where a painting went out on delivery, um, the painting gets hung, and a week later, the client contacts me and says there's a little bit of damage. Um, I'm 99% sure that didn't happen on my end, but I'm gonna go there for free and I'm gonna fix that damage. And if they're not happy, I will refund the painting because at the end of the day, having one person out there that's not happy with you and is talking badly about you is more damaging than anything you can imagine. You wanna have everybody happy at the end of the day and if that involves you refunding a painting or driving 10 hours to make a repair, that's fine. You really need to keep the customer happy and you really need to treat it like a business. So that's the most important thing you can do as an artist. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that was insightful. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video.